You're watching Bread and Roses. Welcome. Hi, I'm Mariam Namazi. And I'm Fadi Bospuya. I'm really sorry we haven't had a program for a few weeks. Busy traveling. I just got back from Soleimani, Kurdistan. Really excited about that. I left a piece of my heart there. We'll be also talking about this week the horrendous terrorist attacks on Manchester, but also other cities in Egypt, Indonesia and Afghanistan. In this week's uh, um, interview, we'll be talking to Basma Habib, one of the participants and organizers of um, f feminist enlightenment in uh, Kurdistan. Yeah. And our uh, insane fatwa is about how unauthorized fatwas um, will be penalized and hmm? punished. And punished. Yes. Uh, and the slice of life is of an Iranian uh, refugee who won a competition uh, set up by Elton John to make a video for Rocket Man. Don't go away, stay with us. This past week we have been rocked, the world has been rocked by several terrorist attacks on innocent civilians, which is usually what terrorism does. One of course was in Manchester where children were attacked, girls were attacked. And you know, it's just heartbreaking when you see images and hear about the loved ones that have been lost. Just, you know, attending a, a concert that you know, children are would love to go to. And of course we see that also it's happened in Egypt, a cop Coptic bus was attacked, uh, children were killed there. In Jakarta, there's been an attack in, in Indonesia, well, in Afghanistan earlier today, yeah. uh, earlier today. So there's constant attacks uh, on civilians and this has become a reality of the world that we live in. And uh, what, when you see this is happening, everybody's thinking, how do we stop Islamist uh, terrorism? You know, from the government, sort of security forces, the governments, uh, you know, the pieces, and you know, ev everybody's thinking, how do we stop uh, this and come up with various solutions? Well, one thing is clear: appeasing the Islamist is not a solution. Mm. Uh, one thing is clear: that to fight the, all of these groups are known. These are not lone wolves. These are not sort of people who just generally sort of have some sort of grievance. No, this is organized, highly organized uh, operation across Europe, mm -hmm. Middle East, and North Africa. They have organization. They are known to security services and they need to be tackled. And that's the reality mm -hmm. of life. Mm -hmm. They need to be rounded up. They need to be arrested. And, and the organization needs to be dismantled. But that's only part of the problem. Yeah. The and other one issue of the is, is, is actually to, to combat the whole ideology of Islamism, yeah. which is constantly is creating a fertile grind, uh, a ground for for these activities. Yeah. I mean, one of the things is I just returned from Soleimania, Kurdistan, and, you know, it's a city that is, on one hand, it's got the Islamic regime of Iran, the next close by, Daesh is there, ISIS is there fighting and killing people, and they're fighting back in, in every way possible, but also they're fighting back ideologically, and they're also fighting uh, for universal values, you know, like secularism, like women's rights and equality, and these are important things to do hand in hand with each other, not appeasement. You know, that's not going to get us anywhere. We yeah. have to tackle the Islamists uh, at the same time, defend human values, universal values, secularism. You, you can't just defeat this militarily and sort of thinking. I mean, the organization needs to be dismantled, the non to security services, the organization needs to be dismantled. But the reality is that you need to face up with the ideology. And and the reality that there is, uh, you know, there is justification day in day out for these activities. Se segregationists in Islam, uh, you know, which is root of uh, Islamic theology, uh, you, that needs to be challenged. And you you know, you have to say there is a problem that is going on with Islam and and the way Islamic institution constantly creating environment for young people to and to go and take part in these uh, sort of horrendous sort of uh, killings and activities. Yeah, and the reality is that, look, you, people have, of course, a right to their religion. This is not what's being talked about. But the fact of the matter is that any religion, when it has access to power and control, 
it is a bleak existence for people living uh, in those societies and we need to focus on separating religion from the state making it an individual affair you know you want to believe in what you want that's your right but it's very different than you know the situation we're faced with today we have to also even though people have a right to religion be able to challenge religion and it's you know, the norms that it promotes, homophobic, uh, well, misogynist, and so on and absolutely. so forth. I mean, look at this. I'm just give a simple example, which is not directly relevant, but you see the, you know, the failure of the political elite and institution and public figures to, to combat this. Ramadan started uh, uh, yesterday, right? All the public uh, figures, the leaders of the political party from Theresa May to Jeremy Corbyn to Tim Farron, all of them and various public figures, they're just involved in sort of congratulating, you know, promoting uh, um, uh, Ramadan. Well, nobody tells you that Ramadan is the darkest month for many, many people in Middle East and North Africa because you have the religious police hunting people down if they eat, they're eating. Mm -hmm. Now, how does that fit in with fighting Islamist terrorism? These are part and parcel mm -hmm. of an environment that creates segregation, is creates something, and it also that makes it people. seem like religion has to be in the public space. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't have to be. It's your affair what you believe in. But when it's brought in in this way, it makes it part and parcel of the state of the power system, and it has adverse effects on people's lives. Yeah. You know, to, to fight Islamist terrorism, you need to dismantle the non organization that exists, um, and also at the same time you know, destroy and undermine and challenge the institution and constitution of the uh, Islamic uh, organization that exists and is spreading everywhere in West, in uh, uh, Middle East and North Africa. I just returned last week from Soleimani, Kurdistan. And uh, I was there to take part in the platform, Dabran Platform Congress, this the third annual one, as well as the founding Congress of Enlightenment Feminism. And I found it to be an inspirational event, you know, a whole packed with people who are trying to promote even further secularism, women's rights and equality. And really, when you look at Kurdistan, it is a high point, a leading light in the fight against Daesh, Islamism in the Middle East, North Africa and for the whole world really. And, yeah, absolutely. And the fact that there's, a, there's war going on not far away, it's not stopping people insisting on women's rights, secularism. And we've always said that the, you know, Middle East, North Africa is teeming with huge, huge, you know, movement for secularism. And that's what we need to represent and show and link up with every activity that and, and fight is going against mm -hmm. religious interference in people's lives. Yeah, what. let's watch now an interview with Basma Habib. She is one of the organizers of the Congress and she was one of the speakers there. What's interesting to note is there was huge debates at the conference, including on the issue of Islamic feminism. And I think for a vast majority of people there, the insistence on a secular state and society in order to be a minimum precondition for women's rights was very loud and clear. Stay with us. Uh, Basma Habib, thank you for doing an interview. I wanted to ask you why you're holding the first Feminist Enlightenment Congress here in Soleimani. Yes, yeah. uh, thank you very much for your interview. Actually, we uh, here in Soleimani, which is part of Kurdistan, north of Iraq, uh, here women's here facing too many challenges. We have too many uh, women's organizations, NGOs, but unfortunately they couldn't uh, find uh, a, a solution for what women are facing here. Uh, we thought, uh, uh, of course, after many meetings with uh, activist women, we find out that uh, we need to change the uh, Human is metal here. We have to, to work on, on the on the uh, thought, on the on the ideas, not uh, what what we are saying that the way of uh, organization that working right now. For example, most of their work it's focused on the result, not the uh, reasons. For example, when once a woman got killed, 
they just go on the street uh, shouting, uh, uh, doing some advocacies, but after a few days there's another uh, things happen, they forget what, what, what they were working on. So we try to work on the reasons why uh, 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 every day we, we have a women's guilt. Uh, because of the honor, uh, why why, uh, why uh, women cannot get her right of uh, uh, political participation uh, in uh, economic, all all the uh, all the uh, sectors. So we have to work of the, uh, our challenge is uh, is to change the way of thinking of the people here, and of course that when I say people, I mean women and men as well. Why have you used the term enlightenment? Uh, sorry? Why have you used the term enlightenment? Yes, of course, uh, too many people ask it as about that. I think it's very important because uh, our uh, society here is different. It has, it's a special society. We are mixed mix of uh, religious and uh, some people that special ideology. We have cultures, different culture that uh, in the other part of, of the earth, so we, we we try to use or get advantage of other people's experience, but at the same time, it's very important to uh, try to uh, to make it fit to our rea reality here. So that's why uh, uh, enlightenment is very important here, because people here are uh, they have closed mind. We have to open their mind, open uh, open their a way of thinking, especially about the religion and about the culture. So we have, you know, uh, people here, like for, for example in this city, you, you will see most of the people, they have open mind, that's what we see, it's a short face. But inside, most of us, they are still belong to, to, uh, to uh, our uh, ideas, to our religions, so we have to work on this to, to make changes. Do you have a lot of support for what you're trying to do? Uh, I, 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 till that moment, no. It's support. We are we are just volunteers. Most of the people that are working of us, they believe of the uh, of this idea. They are working very hard. Until now, we don't have a support people. We try. Uh, today, uh, we we will establish. Uh, our feminism. After that, we will work hard to get some support from other people, maybe from uh, businessmen, businesswomen that they they believe of our uh, uh, idea and all this. What what I mean is, uh, you know, public support. Uh, how do people uh, understand your message? Are they happy to have such a important message? Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, I believe, like last year in the, the uh, f uh, second uh, conference of platform of, of Dabran, uh, I, I had a research uh, about women's rights in Islam, uh, and uh, it was like a bombing, nobody could believe that there's a woman talking about Quran, and I tried to re-interpret uh, uh, inter the, the, the text that in the Quran. But I find now it's better, like when I, I saw the women uh, giving presentation and uh, talking, I, I thought uh, there's a, a good hope and I believe uh, each year we will, uh, we will have uh, uh, more women with us and I think it, even the public, uh, you know it's a long way, but we are trying step by step to do, to do the change. I mean, also there's the question of Daesh and the insecurity uh, that could possibly ensue. How does that put women's rights? Does that sometimes put women's rights in the back seat? I don't look at it this way. Actually, I believe Daesh it had a positive uh, point for, for women's rights because people knew how th those groups are thinking. Before they couldn't imagine it, especially for Arab Sunnah in Iraq, they couldn't imagine it that, that bad they are. But after they experienced being with them, and uh, they saw all those crimes that they are doing it, so I think now it was a good point for us. We have to use it. We have to uh, get advantage of from what the Daesh done. For women, I think it was a positive point, not, not a negative at all. 
And what about secularism? How important do you think that is, secularism? Because that's something you're promoting quite a lot. Of course, of course, secularism, I think it's a first step to do the changing this year. But as I say, we, 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 we uh, choose the, a long and hard way and we are, we are trying to do it step by step because it's not easy. We have to start from, from their belief. I tried, for example, today my uh, my uh, presentation. It will about it, it will it will be about the Quran itself, women's right at Quran. So we have to start from what you believe and try to uh, let you uh, believe what uh, understand my point. So uh, I think it's a long way, but we have to start it uh, step by step and in a soft way, not not the way that. Uh, because of people will not accept it. Final question, what can people abroad do to support this uh, great movement here in Kurdistan? Uh, sorry? People outside, what yes, can sir. they do to support your movement? Of course, of course we need support from everyone. We need uh, financial support, we need uh, uh, other supports, like uh, for example, uh, we have too many women outside of, of Kurdistan. Uh, we, we need them to come and serve us voluntarily because we work for more than a year voluntarily. We need other people to be to believe that and work with us because without changing of women's situation, we cannot change anything. Even politic, every everything. I believe it's belong to women's situation. We have to start from from the women, and then we can do to do the change in the other parts. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. The Religious Affairs Committee of the House of Representatives of the Egyptian government has brought a draft bill which says that anyone who issues a, an unauthorized fatwa, not, not the authorized ones that cause mayhem and havoc, but an unauthorized one, can be given six months prison and even fines. I think mm. you know what's going on? Is war between who's going <laughs> to win the right to issue fatwa. fatwa. It's my fatwa. Yeah. You have no right, and yes. if I've got power, I'm in, in, I'm going to imprison you. <laughs> That's what it is. It's not about sort of the essence of we don't want fatwa. Fatwa is just stupid. We yeah. don't want fatwa. Stupid, now stupid. They are just dividing labor here. They're fighting they, over yeah, who can who issue a fatwa, fatwa, who can't, and it's just absurd. It's no fatwas. That's the way to go. You know, seriously. Stupid fatwa. Majid Adin, an Iranian refugee who arrived in the UK from Calais in 2016, he's won a competition uh, that Elton John had set up to make a video for some of his songs that hadn't had videos before. So this one was for Rocket Man. Yes, uh, um, the cut, the competition, uh, attracted many, many um, applications to uh, cover the old songs. And Majid gave the story of his journey going into the unknown, leaving family and everything they have, you know, describing that journey. And uh, it, it captured the imagination of yes. the, the panel and he won the competition. I've I made a new was, everyone was video. For it's a it. really Elton beautiful John's video. Yeah. We'll show you a small clip of it um, and, and give you a link so you can go see the full video. But he says something to the effect that a rocket isn't just a rocket. It could be a train, it could be a lorry, it could be a plane. And Mars uh, is London to him, you know, somewhere where you come for a new world and a new life. And it, it does capture the refugee experience. It's yeah. really a wonderful video. Yes, and thanks to Elton John and, yes. and the group who chose yeah. Majid's uh, sort of idea. And congratulations to, yes. to Majid as well. Yeah, well, we That brings have... us to the end of the uh, program. And uh, we hope you've enjoyed this week's program. And until next week, from me and Mariam Namazi. Goodbye. Goodbye.
Hi, I'm Mariam Namazi. And I'm Fadi Bospuya. We're hosting a program called Bread and Roses. It's a weekly program that's broadcast in Persian and English in the Middle East and North Africa, primarily Iran as well. And it's also shown on YouTube internationally. And we've been doing this since last May. We're coming up to a year's anniversary and yeah. we, we've had quite a lot of fun making these videos. We discussed taboo breaking, free thinking ideas. The Islamic regime of Iran has called us immoral and corrupt. And that's why the, you need to support us. We are and the vo alternative voice in Middle East and North Africa. Of corruption and immorality. So do support us. Here's a short video from Patreon that explains how you can help us with even just one dollar a week. That's nothing. Support us. Patreon lets fans become patrons of their favorite artists and content creators. It's different than Kickstarter because it's not about one big project that requires lots of funding. It's more for bloggers or YouTubers or webcomics, anyone who creates on a regular basis. Here's how it works. When you become a patron, you're agreeing to give an artist a tip of an amount you set every time they release a piece of content, whether it's a new song, a video, or a recipe. You can set a monthly maximum to make sure that you're always within your budget. Choose an amount, enter your payment information, and you're done. Becoming a patron allows you to view and post in the artist's stream. And in exchange for your support, artists offer additional patron packages, which might include monthly Google Hangouts, music production tutorials, pre-sale concert tickets, or anything they can offer as a way to say thanks. Patreon, empowering a new generation of content creators.